Hello YouTube world, it is Liam the Deaf Doom Metalhead doing my top 10 albums for the year. This ties in with my top 40, so this is part 4. So thank you to everyone who's watched the other three videos. Um, it's just easier for me to you know record them in like 10-15 minute slots throughout the week uh, when the little dude upstairs is asleep and I know I won't get interrupted and I have the light by the window. So I hope you've all enjoyed what I've shown so far. It's been interesting seeing people's reactions because I knew a lot of these albums I'm showing would upset a few people and where they've been placed or surprise a few people or you just don't give a shit. Um, you know, like I said, everyone has a different opinion and that's what makes it exciting for me. So if you've got a different opinion, brilliant. If you think everything I've said is great, you're an idiot. Anyway, right. I will say I'm wearing one of Cloudy Milder's favourite bands as a Christmas jumper. He requested this specifically, a bit of Wham. So there you go, mate. Your favourite band. I know you love it. And... I am drinking some My Dying Bride beer. This is Old Earth, which was brewed at uh, Darkland Brewery in Yorkshire. This turned up yesterday on my doorstep. A nice big box of that to enjoy over the festive seasons. So cheers to everyone watching. Oh, it's bloody lovely. Right, let's kick off. Number 10. Now this was released by Black Lion Records in Sweden. And it's an interesting band. Um, it was tipped off to me by uh, an actual YouTuber actually. Um, over at the Metal Forge channel, there's a, two dudes called Ben and Brandon who uh, put out some amazing content. And in less a year, they've already got a thousand subscribers and they're doing really good work. And I always watch their videos because they're always interesting. And like me, they're fellow Doomheads and musicians. Um, and one of them has put together a band that really surprised me and that musically is brilliant. And he's mixed and mastered it. So, you know, kudos to you, mate. And that is the band Marrowfields with Metamorphosis. Now, this album really surprised me for two reasons. One, it is doom metal, but it has a different spin on it. So it's got that blackened touch to it. It's got epic metal vocals, so they're not growly or nothing like that. Very epic, very traditional metal sounding vocals. But the guitar work on it is, is heavy, melodic, um, atmospheric, and it just flows so well as an album. I'm surprised this is not on a bigger label because I mean, I've never heard of them before and that might be why. This is their first full length, I believe. But it's just brilliant. And it really surprised me how good this album is. I mean, it needs to be pressed on vinyl. Must be pressed on vinyl. Um, I was lucky to get a copy of this off eBay here in the UK. I did ask, I think it's Brandon who did it all, um, if I could get a copy of it off him. But um, he never got back to me, so he probably forgot because he's, he's a busy guy. But he's mixed, mastered this, recorded it all in their home studio with his band. And the guy's fucking good at what he does because it sounds really good. So if you have never checked these guys out before, I will leave a link below to check this one out. Because it's definitely worth looking at because it's a fantastic album. So that's Marrowfields at number 10. Number 9 is one that a few people kept telling me to buy. And it was on my list. I, mean, I finally got around to buying it. I mean, I've been streaming it since it came out, and it is a really good album. Probably the darkest one yet, and uh, that is Draconian, with the album Under a Godless Veil. Now, this came out through uh, Name Palm Records back in October. It's year. And yeah, Draconian. So they are Death Doom, operatic female vocals, um, and over the years, I mean, I've been a fan of these since day one. Um, I've got most of their albums, and yeah, really, really good band. Swedish, um, very low-end tuning guitars, so you've got really nasty-sounding, dark, heavy riffs with loads of atmosphere, loads of melody. Um, but the female vocals on here are what really sets it apart, and this is probably their darkest-sounding album yet, their really mo most miserable-sounding album for me. Um, there's no jolly moments in here, there's no upbeat sections, it's all pure misery, really atmospheric. Um, and there's more emphasis on the female vocals this time than the growl stuff. Um, and I really, really enjoy it. Um, really surprised me how dark this was compared to other you know releases. The female vocals on the older albums are a bit more operatic, whereas this is more toned down, atmospheric singing, to the point. And yeah, it's just a really dark album. And I'm really enjoying it. Artwork is superb as well. Double LP. And yeah, number nine. Really good album, so that's Draconian. Number eight was an album that I'm kind of glad I got during the colder times of the year because when this came out back in August, I tried listening to it and it just did not fit 
with sunshine and lovely weather. Um, and that is Canadian's Astramentus with the album Stygian. This came out through 20 bucks spin, like I said, in August. Uh, Funeral Doom, but this is a concept album. So this album is about, if you're a fan of like books like by Steven Erickson and all those kind of epic um, fantasy books, it's basically that on an album. So by memory, the story is there's a, a guy who's trying to ascend to the gods and he has to travel this path and he's met with all these kind of situations and it's so atmospheric and you have to listen to it all the way through so doing it via streaming while driving isn't going to work um you have i mean for me it was easier to get it on vinyl and just sit here and soak it up and i've had a good few tries of this album and i'm really enjoying it purely because i can sit here look out the window when it's miserable and boom i'm in that situation i mean as you can see here there he is and there is the gods up here giving him a hard time and yeah, it's just such a dark album. What's really cool about this album as well, if I can get it out, is it does come, especially if you get the LP version, it comes with the, the story behind the whole album. So you've got a map there for where he has to go and then the story behind it. Thank you notes here. This was uh, mixed, I think, or at least mastered by Greg over at Priory Studios here in the UK. So for Funeral Doom fans, you know he's going to do a good job. And yeah, and I can see why a lot of people are loving this album. One, the artwork is fantastic. Two, it's very unique sounding. The vocals, he's got like kind of like a, someone compared it to a predator noise, which I think is a brilliant um, comparison. So you've got kind of predator noises, dark growly stuff. And then right at the end, they pick it up with a bit of pace just to kind of finish the album off. And yeah, it's a, definitely a, an experience listening to this album. It's not something you just tune in and, you know, bob around with it. You have to sit down with it and check it out. So that is Astromendous. At number eight. Number seven is a brutal death metal album with doom, progressive elements, everything in between. And I love this band and they, they just don't seem to do anything wrong for me. And that is Temple of Void with The World That Was. This was put out through uh, Shadow Kingdom Records back in March. And yeah, I absolutely love this band. Everything they've put out is solid. They can't do anything wrong for me. Um, this album is a bit more progressive in the, the style, so there's really fuck off heavy sections. But then they draw it out with some kind of atmospheric, kind of trippy stuff as well, and kind of spice up the album a bit more. There's some clean singing on here. Um, but his growly vocals, very much reminiscent of Dave Vincent to me. Um, it's really, really good. Um, and the guitar tone is wicked. You mean, I haven't heard an album that sounds like this, guitar tone wise at all this year this this is the only band i could put this on and go fuck yeah temple of void straight away the tone is ridiculous and i love it um and it's just so heavy like the as soon as it kicks off this album it's just brutal just in your face you know and then and then it kind of builds and yeah brilliant brilliant band and a really strong album uh number six is another album i can't show um i had ordered it and it still hasn't arrived and i'm guessing it's due to the problem with the uh ports here in the uk I ordered it probably the beginning of this month because I've been streaming it for ages um, via Bandcamp, but now I wanted the physical release and I ordered it and it just is still processing. So I'm guessing next year will hopefully arrive without any import charges or whatever happens now we've left the uh, EU. So the um, band in question is Eternal Champion with the album Ravening Iron that came out in November. Uh, yeah, it's traditional metal, which is something I don't normally talk about on this channel. Um, but I listened to it because someone recommended it. And the album artwork, I mean, obviously it caught my eye. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll, you'll see. If you go on Google and have a look, it's uh, full on and I love it. Um, but it's just so easy to get into. Traditional metal with really thumping guitars, brilliant guitar solos, straight to the point, really good production on it. Um, if you like bands like uh, Manila Road... Uh, Man of War, that kind of thing. It's very reminiscent of those styles, but more modern and heavier for me. I mean, it has to be heavy for me to enjoy it. Um, and that, the guitar tone just punches, and the solos are great, and it's just a good album and really fun. Nothing complicated. It's just to the point. Swords in the air. Fuck yeah. You know, that kind of vibe. And yeah, brilliant album. I can't wait to get hold of it, and I'll show you guys, obviously, when it does arrive. So that's number six. Number five is uh, the album that kind of started me on my black metal journey again. Um, I listened to this very on early on in the year. When did it come out? Yeah. 
So this came out in May um, via Vendessa Records and I loved it. Um, and the album artwork is what drew me into it. It's a painting, I think it's a Danish painting. Um, and it just drew me in straight away. And that is Afsky with the album I can't pronounce, but I will obviously put it in the description of this video so you know what I'm talking about. This is a Danish black metal band, one man solo project. And yeah, this is what kicked off my uh, like obsession with getting into black metal again. And I listened to this, I really, really enjoyed it. And I just started talking to my mate Kenny and saying, you know, what other black metal bands can I listen to? And I just started from there. Um, and ever since then, you know, it's just become the norm for me. Whereas before last year, I obviously like black metal. I have a few black metal albums, but it was not something I'd go out of my way to listen to. And what I like about this is it's not lo-fi. It's not in your face, you know, all about, you know, hating religion and all that kind of thing. I, you know, I like all that, but it's not what it's about. This is more of an emotional journey. It's very atmospheric, very miserable. And this picture here kind of sums up what the album is about. Um, and that's what I really liked about it. It was very melodic. The riffs are very catchy, very easy to remember. And yeah, I've been spinning this loads since I've got it. Um, and I've been streaming it even more because I don't want to ruin the, the vinyl. So definitely worth checking out if you haven't heard this before. And if you're like me, kind of into black metal, but you're kind of trying to get into it more, do this. So yeah, ASCII. Number four is an album that came out by Everlasting Spew in July. Um, and it is a Finnish... Funeral Death Doom Band, and I love these guys. This is their second full length, and that is Convocation with Ashes Kalis. And yeah, I've shown this album a few times on this channel, and there's, there's good reasons why. This this band, it's a two piece, are just brilliant. They do everything that's cool about um, Finnish Funeral Doom. Like it's really bleak, very heavy, very melodic. The vocals are brilliant. Um, I did think there's female vocals but it's actually one of the guys doing a really high-pitched wail that kind of sounds like a female fronted vocalist. So that's really weird, um, but really cool at the same time, because if you can do that, you must be squeezing your balls like mad to go that high, but there you go. Um, and it's just, it's just a really good album. I mean, the solos are really good, the melodies are spot on, and it's not boring for me. Really, really enjoying this, and it's just brilliant. This was also uh, mastered by Greg at Priory Studios, um, so again, another Funeral Doom band reaching out to one of the best. If you don't know Greg, he's obviously the front man for Esoteric, so he knows what he's doing. And even the vinyl itself, you know, it looks amazing. So I'm very, very happy to get a copy of this. And I've been, you know, playing this one solidly throughout the year since I've had it as well. Pre-ordered it straight away, and you know, I've not been disappointed since. So that is Convocation with Ashes Galice. Number three was an album that was tipped off to me by my friend Harry, a band I never heard of before, and this is their debut. American band doing something that sounds completely different to all the other albums of this style that have come out this year, and that is Fires in the Distance with uh, Echoes from Deep November. Now this came out through uh, Prosthetic Records back in September. And yeah, this album... It's just amazing. So the tone of the guitars was what sets it apart for me and the production on it. So it's very scooped sounding guitars to me. Very, very technical. Um, they know how to play their guitars. Very, I think they use seven strings like I do, but they do you know, a lot more on the scale length than I ever would bother. Um, very chuggy, very low end, but the solos are very technical, very shreddy, you know, almost like Steve Vai-esque in a way. On some sections that you know over the top technicality but it works really really well with the melodies they're creating on this you've got a lot of um keyboard synth sounds that kind of break up the album but make it sound unique the drums sound really deep and nice the bass sounds fantastic and yeah production wise is what sets it apart for me and what made it really really interesting because it doesn't sound like any other band that's come out this year um artwork as well as killer um and they're just a really heavy band like songs like Lock and the Key is the first one I heard, and that instantly made me pre-order this album straight away. Um, and then I've listened to the rest of it, and I, again, solid. There's not a bad track on this album. It's really, really cool to listen to all the way through. Um, yeah, and I can't wait for these guys to see what else they can do, because also on YouTube they've recorded themselves playing this essentially live. And even playing it live is just flawless, and it sounds just as good as it does on the album. So go check out Fires in the Distance. That's my number three. 
Ali meu pé. Any Maiden fans? Yeah. Anyway, number two. It's not a metal album. Um, it's not a metal album. They were a black metal band way back in the 90s, but this is not a metal album. And this is an album, in, if you told me I was going to put this in like a top 10 last year, I'd have told you an idiot. Um, I got into this band purely because everybody was talking about it, and the cover art intrigued me. And I listened to it, knowing they were a black metal band, but I didn't realise they'd changed their style and all that kind of thing. I only knew about what I knew. Um, and I listened to it, and I was just like, ah, that's pretty catchy. It reminded me of Duran Duran and stuff like that. Um, so on the way to picking my oldest son up from school and stuff like that, I put it on in the car. And the more and more I listened to it, the more I got into it. And, and since then, it's just been every other week I listen to this album. Every other week um, since I've had it since it came out um and it's just weird like my older son he's a big fan of it as well so when he goes to sleep he has a playlist playing in the background of his room and it features tracks off this album and that is over with flowers of evil now this came out back in august and like i said it, it reminds me of duran duran 80s kind of synth pop that kind of thing it's just very very memorable very very catchy and it's something i would never in a million years thought I'd be into um, and it's completely surprised me and I've checked out the previous release to this uh, the assassination of Julius Caesar and I really like that one but then there's some albums of theirs I can't get into it's just too out there for me and they're, they're ones I probably need to really sit down with and take in but this was an instant hit for me I mean my favorite track on here is uh, Hour of the Wolf it's just dark ambient really catchy really good singing on it and I just love it. I absolutely love this album. It sounds amazing on vinyl as well. Like you can stream it and it's cool, but when you've got it in a full sound system, it's just a different experience. And I've, again, I could, I can't recommend this album enough for anyone who wants to try something different. Just put it on in the background and see how you think, because it really surprised me how catchy this is, and it's very, very memorable. So yeah, over at number two. I didn't think that was going to happen. And number one, another one that surprised me, but. Again, it's not really that much of a surprise. Now, I'm a big Robert Lowe fan. Solitude of Chernus, Candlemas, when he was in Candlemas, I was a big fan of that. Um, and all that kind of thing is over the years, been my thing, like top five bands, Solitude of Chernus is in there, vocalist top five, Robert Lowe is in there. So when this was announced that he joined this band, it was a bit confusing because they're not a doom band. They were a traditional American heavy metal band with you know, a bit of thrash influences, a bit of power metal influences, I guess new wave of British heavy metal kind of tone in there as well and they've been around since the 80s um, and then he joined this band and put this album out or the title track anyway and I listened to it and I was just like fucking hell I really really like that it's like really catchy very sabbathy very memorable and I I did my Spotify end of year thing you know it tells you how many albums you've listened to what's your favorite and this came up and it made me think about it and it, I do listen to this a lot like if I walk the dog I put this on in my headphones because I know I'm going to enjoy it. Go out in the car, this normally comes on. If I'm chilling out in here, there's a track or two that comes on for either playlist. And that is Tyrant with Hereafter. Now this came out back in May through uh, Shadow Kingdom Records again. So it's two in the top ten from them. And yeah, this is an amazing album. It's really, really catchy. Like, really catchy. Nothing complicated. It sounds like it's been recorded in the 80s, which is kind of weird. Um, and it's just, I love it. I mean, it's not crisp and clear production, not modern sounding at all. It's very much, if you told me this was released in like the late 80s and this is a repress, I'd believe you. Um, but it's not, it's brand new. Um, I mean, Tyrant have been going for years and I know a few guys who watch these videos and who follow me like Cloudy, uh, Metal Mickey and people like that. They know about Tyrant and have the older albums that are very much not a doom band at all. But this, this combines the two styles really really well i mean my favorite tracks are like pieces of mine hereafter fire burns uh when the sky falls i mean the whole album is solid for me dancing on graves it's just brilliant it's just really simple traditional doom you know it's not crushing it's not heavy it's not brutal it's just very much 80s sounding traditional doom Really cool, like hair metal, like guitar solos, 
uh, kind, of, kind of matches up with what they used to sound like back in the day. So it's a kind of a blend of the two styles. And it, it just, it, I've just really, really enjoyed it. So that is my number one for the year, Tyrant Hereafter. So yeah, there you go. The sun's coming out now. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll sit back here so you can see me. So I hope you've enjoyed my uh, top 10. I know it was going to be a little bit different to what many people expect with the whole brutality of death and doom and all that kind of thing. But obviously throughout the years, you know, I've matured a bit and I don't listen to that all the time. But obviously that is my main go-to style of music. So I hope you've enjoyed my uh, top 40 metal albums. Let me know what you think of the top 10. Um, and also watch the other videos if you haven't already. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's watched all my videos since I started this channel. I'm nearly at 350 subscribers, which is insane for me because I thought I'd be like 100 at best. Um, you know, I'm just whittling on here. I'm not making anything really that interesting. I'm just talking about the music I enjoy. And I've met so many cool people and it's been a really nice experience for me. And it's made me want to carry on doing it because I kind of had, you know, my reservations about doing this whole YouTube thing from the start. Because um, I'm not one of those kind of people that likes attention or fuss, you know, that kind of thing. But I've just enjoyed every moment of it. Um, and I will hopefully do a video just before New Year, kind of tie in with the whole uh, vinyl community thing. So look out for that. But until then, I hope you all have a merry, merry Christmas. Even though COVID has been shit this year and I've done fuck all, the only thing I could say that's been really good about this year is collecting music again and meeting loads of cool people. And you know, I know, you know, you know what I mean. You know who you are. So yeah. Anyway, Merry Christmas, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Cheers.